afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Wednesday. Hello, Susan. Hello. How are you doing at midweek? Not too bad. A little warmer today, so that helps a little bit. And at least yeah, we're, we're not, not, not bad. And, and Gary's on the show today. That's exciting. Yes, he is. He'll be doing the weather in just a few minutes. But first, here's what's making news on this Wednesday. State lawmakers are demanding answers from the Department of Workforce Development after months of unemployment delays. Some senior living communities in our area could start seeing COVID-19 vaccines within the next couple of weeks. We'll share how officials are planning to distribute the shots. And a new stimulus agreement in Washington could be reached by the end of the day. We'll tell you how much money you could receive in a stimulus check. But we're continuing to follow a report showing just how long it took people in Wisconsin to get their unemployment benefits during the pandemic. Today, lawmakers heard from auditors who looked at the surge, and our Amy Reed joins us now with how they reacted. Amy? Well, the report out this week showed nearly one in four people who submitted claims had to wait five or more weeks to hear any response. For reference, it's usually supposed to take about three weeks. We went over some of this with you yesterday, and today lawmakers got to ask follow-ups to the people who put the report together. They asked about the delay, which DWD attributes primarily to the massive influx of claims this year. Many lawmakers said the results of this audit were what they expected. The sad truth of the details that are exposed in this you know, professional audit aren't really a surprise to most of us because we've heard all that from these calls. Lawmakers tried to figure out what they could do to improve the system, to clear the backlog, and to make sure this doesn't happen again. DWD and the auditors did say there are parts of adjudication that could use a closer look, such as the process they have to follow when someone quits their job. Right now, that requires DWD staff to investigate why that happened, which they said can be difficult to assess, especially if employers and former employees give different stories. Now, after the hearing, we heard much of the same from lawmakers who still blame their colleagues on the other side of that aisle, whether that's accusing the Evers administration of poor leadership or accusing Republicans of not upgrading IT systems. Amy, thank you. Dane County health officials announced 20 more people in Dane County have died from COVID-19 complications. Many of those deaths happened in November and early December. Public Health Madison Dane County officials were able to confirm the circumstances of each death yesterday. Across the state, 77 deaths were reported today, bringing the state's death toll to more than 4,300. 2,100 people have tested positive for the virus since yesterday. More frontline workers at hospitals around the country are receiving the COVID-19 vaccinations as cases of the virus continue to rise. A panel of experts is expected to vote tomorrow to recommend a second vaccine for approval. Elise Preston reports from New York. Frontline workers from coast to coast continue to get their first doses of Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine. How's that? Can you feel it? A shot in the arm, top health experts say, offers relief in the battle against the virus. We hope the overwhelming percentage of the population will accept the vaccine. If we do that, we will get a, a veil or an umbrella of herd immunity over the population. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar toured Georgetown University Hospital in D.C. as workers got vaccinated. I want to be focused this week on protecting uh, these health care workers. And there is new promise for a second coronavirus vaccine. An FDA advisory panel has confirmed the safety and efficacy of one produced by Moderna, which could be approved for emergency use as early as Friday. As the rollout continues, hospitals here in the Northeast scrambled to get shipments of Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine ahead of today's major winter storm. These healthcare workers at Elmhurst Hospital in New York City rolled up their sleeves and tried to build confidence in the vaccine. You have to do your own research and everybody has to make their own decisions, but not to be afraid of a vaccine. Despite the surge, Florida's governor is keeping restaurants open, attracting visitors. Less restrictions, it's good, that's why we're here, to get out of the weather. In central and southern California, nearly 90% of ICU beds are full. Governor Gavin Newsom is putting more mobile morgues on standby and sending another 5,000 body bags to hotspots around the state. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York.
Alaska state health officials have confirmed that a health worker suffered an allergic reaction to Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine yesterday. The drug maker says it's looking into the claim. Well, this round of vaccinations could be the key to you seeing your elderly loved ones again. Long-term care facilities are working with the state and federal government to get senior citizens the vaccines. Brady Mallory joins us with a closer look at how one facility is planning to do that. Brady? Well, we've seen those countless photos of people standing outside of windows at retirement communities and nursing homes. For a long time, that's been the only way we've been able to visit grandparents or parents who live there. Well, that'll hopefully be behind us very soon. Capri Communities is one of Wisconsin's largest providers in senior living in southern Wisconsin. Right now, it's working with DHS and Walgreens to get vaccines to about 1,200 of its residents and 500 employees spread out in about 20 locations. A lot goes into making that happen. First, they need to see how much vaccine they get and when they can start. December 28th is a possibility, but the CEO says that isn't confirmed yet. There are some other logistics, though. Not only does staff have to work with patients to get them their shots, but they also have to make sure they care for them in other ways. Our memory care residents generally have shorter attention spans, and so for them to wait in a line and for their turn, the, our, our staff is our staff is going to be um, pretty busy <laughs> in terms of making sure that we keep everybody focused and everybody patient. Tarantino says another part of getting ready is making sure they have the adequate space. And he says even though vaccinations are not required for residents, a large percentage of them are choosing to do to do get the shot. Thank, Brady, thank you. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill could reach a deal on a COVID relief package before the end of the day. The president-elect praised lawmakers on Capitol Hill as both sides say they are close to an agreement on a $900 billion COVID relief package. The bill could include another round of direct payments for many Americans. The American people need more help. It's that simple. This won't be the last time Congress speaks on COVID relief. President-elect Biden says the proposed package is an important down payment while hinting that more action may be needed after he takes office next month. Well, the East Coast is gearing up for the first winter storm of the season, a nor'easter that could deliver a major wallop. Some areas expect up to two feet of snow, along with freezing rain and blustery winds. With more than 60 million people in the path of the massive winter storm, shoppers are stocking up at hardware stores. Shovels are going fast. In Philadelphia, alone. 80 plows are standing by with the city expecting as much as a foot of snow. I suspect where it may move around is where it's rain, where it's slush, where it's mixed, where it's snowing. It will do all four of those. After blanketing Oklahoma, the storm now threatens 1,000 miles from North Carolina through New England. Some areas could see up to two feet of snow. New York City's Mayor Bill de Blasio says the weather will not get in the way of deliveries of the COVID vaccine, but shipping companies are keeping an extra close watch on the forecast. If the storm does cripple highways, they'll need a plan B to get the precious cargo to distribution points around the country. Our weather, by contrast, pretty quiet. The snow is on the ground. Whole hum is nice, says Chief Meteorologist Gary Canelty, who's on the backyard weather patio. It's nice to have a quiet weather pattern this time of year, at least around here, and uh, it looks like that trend will continue uh, right, almost right up into the Christmas holiday. Now, the live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison shows skies have clouded up again, but you can see really no precipitation across Wisconsin. There are some snow showers and flurries to our south and east and to our north and west, but once again, we're kind of in between. Last night, low temperatures dropped into the upper teens before they started rising. Here in Madison, our low temperature was at 18. High temperatures have been in the upper 20s to the lower 30s. And right now, temperatures are right around the 30 degree mark, give or take a degree or two. Wind chills right now, not much of a factor. Low to mid 20s as the winds are pretty light. Otherwise, expect skies to be uh, mostly cloudy overnight. Temperatures will drop to around 20 by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, we'll see variably cloudy skies, kind of like today, a few peaks of sun in there at some point. High temperature topping out at 32. But again, the weather should stay relatively quiet 
into at least the first part of next week. As we take a look at first warrant traffic, right now, not seeing any problems on the roads. We're in and around Dane County, major highways, including the Beltline and the interstate on the east side of Madison, moving at the posted speed limits to the south on I-3990 down to, toward Illinois and I-94 toward Milwaukee, as well as US-12 into southeastern Wisconsin. Traffic moving at the posted speeds, as well as areas north of Madison, including US-151 toward the Fox Valley, I-39 into central Wisconsin, and I-90-94 through the Dells toward uh, the Toma and La Crosse areas. That's your news for now, First Warrant Traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. We'll see you in a few minutes. The Wisconsin Department of Justice is releasing the names of those involved in the officer-involved death in Fort Atkinson last week. Officials say Wisconsin State Patrol tried to stop a vehicle for speeding on Highway 26 near Watertown. A passenger ran from the car but was later arrested. The driver of the car, 23-year-old Joseph Crawford, took off. The vehicle hit spike strips at Highway 26 and Highway 12. That's when police say Crawford got out of the vehicle with a handgun and attempted to carjack another vehicle. Three troopers fired their weapons and hit Crawford. He died of multiple gunshot wounds at the scene. The three troopers who fired their weapons are Trooper Keegan Williams, Trooper Alexander Polizzi, and Trooper David Heinisch. All three are currently on administrative leave, which is common procedure. The deadline has now come and gone for guaranteed ground shipping delivery by Christmas, but you can avoid any extra fees or potential delays altogether by shopping local. That is especially important, of course, this year, since hundreds of businesses across Dane County have closed, including more than two dozen on State Street. Our Christina Laurie headed downtown to find out what the future of State Street might look like. Hi guys, we're back out here on State Street this morning talking about the importance of shopping local with Tiffany from downtown Madison. Tiffany, these businesses all along State Street have had a rough year to say the least. What are the numbers? I know you've been keeping track of how many, unfortunately, had to close. Yeah, it's been a really rough year for all small businesses. It's been especially difficult downtown on State Street. We had 153 businesses as of June 1st. We've unfortunately had 31 of those businesses announce permanent closures. And we have 14 of them that have launched GoFundMe campaigns in hopes that they will make it through and be here on the other side of the pandemic. And another way to support them besides just donating directly to their GoFundMe pages is to actually shop at them and get Absolutely. something. Absolutely. I mean, really, it's easy to support our local businesses. They've put in place measures so that you can do so safely. You could actually just shout out to them on Facebook and social media and tell them you're thinking about them. Or you can shop that way, too. Call them up. Instagram, email, all the mechanisms are available to reach out to our small businesses and make sure you support them. And Yelp reviews also can go a long way. Absolutely. If you wanted to provide a positive review or a share of your experience with your network of friends or your circle of friends, that means a lot to these small businesses right now. Absolutely. And hopefully folks at home can use this next week as an opportunity to get out here safely. Many of these businesses have put new safety measures in place, so we'll post that on the website so you can know that you are safe when you're coming out here to shop small and shop local. Christina, thank you. The website that Christina referenced is MainStreetWI.com, and we have a link to it posted on our website, Channel3000.com. And like Tiffany mentioned, those Yelp reviews can go a long way. Well, still to come at four as the pandemic rages on, so does something else, a rise in domestic abuse. We'll take a look at the warning signs of domestic abuse and where to go for help. That's coming up when Live at 4 continues. You're watching News 3 Now, Live at 4. Wish you didn't have to look at years of wear and tear on your kitchen cabinets? Then let Mad City Kitchens make your wish come true. As your trusted local source for kitchen cabinet refacing, we can help you avoid a lengthy remodel and stay under budget. Our in-home design consultants make it fun and easy to choose cabinet colors, new hardware options, and countertops installed in as little as two days. Your dream kitchen is within reach. Act now during our end of the year blowout sale. Receive 75% off installation of your cabinet refacing project. Ask about zero down, zero payments, and zero interest till 2022. Plus a nice gift when you call during this program. Receive a $50 Walmart or Amazon gift card with your in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, dial 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383.
Call now. We are the Thrivers, women with metastatic breast cancer. Our time for more time has come. Living longer is possible and proven in postmenopausal women taking Cascali plus Fulvestrant. In a clinical trial, Cascali plus Fulvestrant helped women live longer with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, and it significantly delayed disease progression. Cascali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Ask your doctor about living longer with Kiskali. Carrier has a complete line of home heating products to keep your family comfortable this winter without burning your budget. With smart temperature management and remote access options, it's easier than ever to control your home's climate. And Carrier energy efficient systems can help reduce utility bills without sacrificing comfort. For more complete comfort and greater peace of mind, turn to your Carrier expert. Harker Heating and Cooling. There's a splash of surprise in every Wisconsin lot scratch game. Like the exciting new play style of $2 Lucky Deal. Match three cards in the same hand or two cards from the same hand with the bonus card to win a prize. There's a chance to win up to eight times on each ticket and a top prize of $4,000. Instant scratch games from the Wisconsin Lottery. Odds are you'll like them. Well, welcome back. Quarantines aimed at keeping people safe during the pandemic may actually be making some people less safe. Domestic abuse is on the rise. Supporting community-based programs and learning to spot the warning signs of intimate partner violence can save a life. Maggie Ginsberg writes about it in the January issue of Madison Magazine. But today, Shannon Berry joins us. She is the Executive Director of Domestic Abuse Intervention Services, or DAYS. Shannon, good to see you. Welcome. Great to see you both. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, thank you for joining us. You know, the, the holidays are a difficult time of year by on their own. But how significantly is the pandemic affecting cases of domestic violence? Well, certainly. Um, I think that we have kind of a, a double whammy here in terms of both the pandemic and the economic recession. Um, we saw in 2000, between 2008 and 2009 with the last economic recession, days experienced a 107% increase in the number of people seeking shelter services from us. Um, so when you think about the fact that we're dealing with an economic recession as well as now a pandemic, um, as you can imagine, our numbers have gone up significantly. Um, and we are experiencing or having a lot of clients who are sharing um, much more severe instances of violence and um, sharing a lot of additional pressures such as mental health issues and and you know things like trying to virtual virtually homeschool their kids and all of that so it's a lot of uh, different pressures that are all creating a, a pretty much a pressure cooker for families yeah it's an alarming increase for someone looking in from the outside what are some warning signs you should look for um, sure. So I think, you know, typically when I talk about domestic violence warning signs, I talk a lot about isolation. And now clearly everybody's isolated, um, but that can often be a, an indicator that the, there is some domestic violence or some power and control dynamics happening in a relationship. Um, it becomes a little bit more difficult as a concerned friend or family member to keep an eye out for those things. Um, but if people are, you know, talking with friends and family members and they're noticing changes in behavior, um, additional stressors, um, we're really encouraging folks to reach out to friends and family that they're concerned about to have some you know confidential conversations if possible to talk about you know are you how is the, how are things are you safe you know can we set up a code word or something like that so that if you ever need assistance that I can help you um, so there are a lot of ways that we're still all connecting virtually and so thinking about safety planning in sort of that creative manner um, but you know anytime families are feeling financial pressure and this is true whether families are wealthy or not wealthy um, we know that domestic violence rates go up um, and that's what we continually see. 
If you or someone you know is in a crisis situation, what kinds of services are available at days? Sure, well, the first thing is our 24-hour helpline, um, and that number is 608 251-4445. It is answer, being answered right now by professional staff 24 um, hours a day. And that's really the gateway to all of our services. We have a number of people who call the helpline, not just those who are experiencing domestic violence, but people who are worried about someone in their life. And our trained advocates are happy to help and kind of support people through that. We also have case management services, um, children's programming, parenting support. Uh, we do some primary prevention programming remotely. And then uh, legal advocacy services, which have been continuing to go um, full speed ahead as the pandemic, even when it started, um, who can help people navigate the legal system and participate in court hearings. Um, and then we operate the only domestic violence shelter for Dane County. Um, and all of those services can be accessed through that 24-hour helpline. Yeah, it's a, just a bad mix of everything coming together at the wrong time. Absolutely. But we really want to encourage people to reach out if you have anybody that you're worried about or you need support yourself. Um, we are here for you 24-7 and we are an essential service and we will remain here until um, as, as people need us. There is help out there. Mm -hmm. Shannon, thanks for being with us. Thank you both. Happy holidays. You too. Thank, Thank you, care. Shannon. Great to see you. It was and, great to see you. And you can read this article and more in the upcoming edition of Madison Magazine on newsstands on Tuesday. Well, there's more at four. We all know the tremendous pressure and stress our frontline medical workers face these days. But one medical group in Ohio is trying to relieve that stress. We'll find out how coming up after Gary's forecast. Chevy employee discount for everyone to get over $5,200 below MSRP on this traverse. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. If it's time to update your kitchen, then do yourself a favor. Call the experts at Mad City Kitchens. Our kitchen cabinet refacing process gives your cabinets a brand new modern look in as little as two days. Go bright with frosty white or choose a warmer, darker look with chocolate pear. We have several colors and options for an end result you're gonna love. You can't beat it, the company, the product, everything is fantastic. My new kitchen has definitely increased the value of my home. Your kitchen update is guaranteed to be a hit and it's more affordable than ever now during our end of the year blowout sale. Receive 75% off installation of your cabinet refacing project. Ask about zero down, zero payments and zero interest till 2022. And call during this program. We have a nice gift for you. A $50 Walmart or Amazon gift card with your in-home estimate. Dial 608-298-5383. You're up early. Ah, well, U.S. Cellular is giving away the latest phones for free with no hidden requirements, so I did not want to miss it. Actually, you can get the latest phones free all season long. What? All season long, huh? Yep, and no hidden requirements. You in the market for any camping gear? only been used once. At U.S. Cellular, get the latest phones free with the plan of your choice and no required phone trade-ins all season long. U.S. Cellular, upgrade to fair. Ladies, check it out. So strong, so not ripped. What are we talking about? That's the hefty, ultra-strong bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty! Give me. Give me the bag. Get hefty, ultra-strong at a low price. I got your back, you got mine. Think about you all. of home is worth sharing. This holiday season, use the Pick and Save app to get personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. So you can save big on exactly what you want, no matter who you are. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. We'll take a look at this. It's Santa and his sleigh. 
the Christmas presents and candy canes, decorations you'd normally find at somebody's house or in their yard, where you don't expect to see them, is on a car. The Christmas car has been making the rounds in Houston. It's Christmas magic in motion, Santa's sleigh you can actually steer. Evelyn Fosnott calls it her Christmas cab, a 1977 checker cab with more than 470,000 miles on it and 2,000 twinkling lights all powered by a generator covered in gifts. And Rudolph leading the way. Evelyn and the Christmas cab comes out every year. It's the holiday spirit rolling down the streets of Houston. <laughs> She's into Christmas, Gary. Love it. You know, it's funny. I actually thought about trying something like that because in our, our minivans, we actually have a 120-volt outlet oh, in there where sure. we could actually plug in lights instead of having to use a, a generator. But I had something happen over the last couple of weeks that just kind of prevented me from... <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling these days? I'm, I, I'm actually feeling very good. And again, I want to thank everybody who has, who has sent emails and text messages and cards and, and letters and Facebook messages. I mean, they're just, just beyond... Uh, thankful uh, that, that people were able to, to do that but fortunately I think I've turned the corner my energy is coming back and I'm about 20 pounds lighter so there you well, go <laughs> that, that's a good part well it looks like we are going to be seeing some flurry chances uh, off and on through perhaps just before Christmas when then there's a possibility for some light snow I'll take a look at our forecast in just a few minutes Plan a perfect staycation at the Madison Concourse Hotel and Governor's Club. Bring the family to enjoy our indoor pool or reconnect with the couple's getaway in our Governor's Club, serving complimentary cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, and breakfast. Gift certificates are available. Visit concoursehotel.com. Our new house is amazing. Great street, huge yard. There is a bit of an issue with our neighbor's fencing. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Which helps us save even more. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Peter. Push it. What? Oh. Hey. Oh, For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. If Update the Kitchen has been on your wish list all year long, you're running out of time. Call Mad City Kitchens now. We're family owned and operated. Over two decades of remodeling experience and an a rating with the BBB. Let us help you create the perfect look for your kitchen with our quality cabinet refacing. It makes a huge difference and can be done in as little as two days. Don't make excuses for that outdated kitchen. Make improvements now during our end of the year blowout sale. Listen to this 75% off installation of your cabinet refacing project. Ask about zero down, zero payments and zero interest till 2022. Don't put it off. Last chance to call during this program for the $50 Walmart or Amazon gift card with your in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, dial 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. Call now. Needed Relief Day Spa and Wellness is a place where you can relax, be pampered, and revitalize your life in a safe and tranquil environment. Our guest safety and comfort is our top priority. Revitalize yourself at Needed Relief today and give the gift of wellness to those you love with a Needed Relief gift card. Available now online. It's exactly what we all need. Needed Relief Day Spa and Wellness. Madison's world-class wellness spa. Plan a perfect staycation at the Madison Concourse Hotel and Governor's Club. Bring the family to enjoy our indoor pool or reconnect with the couple's getaway in our Governor's Club, serving complimentary cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, and breakfast. Gift certificates are available. Visit concoursehotel.com. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Well, skies have remained mostly cloudy. We've seen some sunshine a little bit at, at times, but that'll be the case over the next couple of days. But temperatures at least will be a little bit milder as we head into uh, the end of the week. Now, as we take a look at future track, this is beginning 6 p.m. Saturday. We could see a few flurries during the day on Saturday as the weather system moves through. But for the for most part, the first part of next week leading up toward the Christmas holiday should be relatively quiet. Could be a couple of passing flurries late Sunday night into Monday, early Monday morning. And then we'll look for quiet weather for much of the day on 
on Tuesday, but clouds will start moving in Tuesday afternoon, and it now looks like some light snow will develop from uh, later Tuesday night into Wednesday. It's a narrow band, and depending on where that band sets up, there could be some snow accumulations, but then after that passes, we're just left with a couple of flurries for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day right now should be dry, but notice the winds, uh, at least uh, leading toward Christmas, were generally out of the north, and that will keep temperatures on the cold side. Now, as far as snowfall amounts are concerned, this is a look at future track snowfall potential all the way through the end of next week. So again, most of the snow is going to be in the Tuesday night, Wednesday time frame of next week. And it does show the potential for some more significant snow accumulations in northeastern Wisconsin, with maybe a couple of inches through southern Wisconsin. The other longer range computer model indicates the potential for a heavier snowfall over southern Wisconsin. I'm not going to jump on these numbers right now. We're still about a week out from this, and these numbers have been uh, about three days ago. It showed similar numbers, and yesterday it showed absolutely nothing. So again, we're just keeping an eye on it, but there is the potential at least for some snow accumulation from Tuesday night into Wednesday right before Christmas Eve. Otherwise, three things you need to know in the forecast. With cloudy skies, it'll be quiet overnight with low temperatures around 20. Tomorrow, seasonably cold temperatures with highs in the lower 30s. We'll be in the mid-30s on Friday, and then we could see some flurries from Friday night into the day on Saturday. That should not amount to very much. As we look at weather track across the upper Midwest, lots of clouds, not much in the way of precipitation. The jet stream kind of wiggling up and down, but the uh, big dip that we saw in the jet stream to our west earlier, that has moved off to the east, and that's what's fueling that east coast snowstorm and uh, the potential for some freezing rain closer to the coast. But our part of the Midwest, very quiet right now with chilly conditions. In fact, you can see low pressure now organizing just west of Washington, D.C. That's where all the snow and freezing rain is, and there are winter storm warnings for much of the mid-Atlantic states through uh, New York City and into much of New England, but our part of the Midwest, very quiet. Temperatures, upper 20s to around 30 degrees, and it looks like we'll see similar temperatures over the next couple of days. On future track, lots of clouds, but not much in the way of precipitation. Again, we'll see uh, some breaks in the clouds maybe tomorrow afternoon, and then perhaps again on Friday. But on Friday, the winds will be out of the south, and temperatures should reach the middle 30s. So for tomorrow, I'm looking for variably cloudy skies. Day very similar to today with a high temperature of about 32 degrees. 7 to 10 day forecast. Temperatures mid 30s on Friday and then uh, mid 30s on Saturday. Again, flurry chance Friday night into Saturday. Shouldn't amount to very much. If there is going to be snow accumulation, it's most likely going to be in the Tuesday night, Wednesday time frame. It should clear out of here for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Maybe some flurries on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Both those days look cold with high temperatures in the middle 20s, but if we get a little more snow on Tuesday and Wednesday, those temperatures might even be a little bit colder for the Christmas holiday. All right, Gary, keep an eye on that. As COVID hospitalizations are surging around the country, healthcare workers are feeling even more physical and emotional stress. One hospital system in Ohio is trying a unique way to relieve some of that strain. Naomi Ruckham explains. Heather Hines is on the front lines of the pandemic. As a medical ICU nurse, she's dealing with a lot. You don't want to bring anything home. Then you see how sick people can actually get and it could happen to anyone, so you're just, it, it does, it brings on a little bit of extra fear and anxiety coming into work. Nine months into the pandemic and with the next wave overwhelming hospitals, Dr. Kenneth Yeager says healthcare workers are simply fatigued. We're having both physical exhaustion and we're having emotional exhaustion. That's the big challenge. When emotionally you are giving so much of yourself that it is really difficult to find energy to keep moving forward. To offer comfort and support to staff, the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center launched Buckeye Paws, a program that brings certified therapy dogs like Shiloh right to the COVID floors. The dogs are like magnets. I mean, staff can't stop. They just go right to them. And what is really amazing is you can see the stress kind of leach out of the individual. No matter what's going on that day, when the dog comes in, it puts a smile on everyone's face. Heather says she tries her best to stay positive during these trying times. I have two beautiful little babies at home and they definitely uh, keep my stress down. So being around them, um, I try to eat healthy and work out because that keeps my mind in the right place. And her pet therapy continues after those long work days. She has three dogs waiting for her at home. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. It's just like having the news hounds in the newsroom. <laughs> they do the same thing for all of us. The medical center has also implemented support groups for staff and individual services are also available to anyone in need. Everything's better if a dog's involved. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, we'll be right back.
Looking for a sofa? Looking for a chair? You haven't shopped furniture in Madison until you've shopped Dwellings, Madison's best kept secret for design and furniture. Shop our fabulous new showroom, Hard Rock Road, Fitchburg. You were always the responsible one. So much like me. Always taking care of everyone else. But this, this wasn't your responsibility. I already took care of the arrangements. The Ryans made it so easy. I didn't want you to worry about a thing. It's my last gift to you, my lovely daughter. Where can a healthier heart lead you? For people with heart failure taking Entresto, it may lead to a world of possibilities. Entresto is a heart failure medicine prescribed by most cardiologists. It was proven superior at helping people stay alive and out of the hospital. Heart failure can change the structure of your heart, so it may not work as well. Entresto helps improve your heart's ability to pump blood to the body. And with a healthier heart, there's no telling where life may take you. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or Aliskirin, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto for heart failure. And trust your heart to Entresto. Attic Angel Community has earned a reputation as the one and only. But what's so memorable to the people who live here? It's good local heart. Interesting friends. The view from my window. Continuing education. The food. The amazing art studio. Happy hour. There are many reasons to love Attic Angel Community, but there's just one Attic Angel. Looking for a sofa? Looking for a chair? You haven't shopped furniture in Madison until you've shopped Dwellings, Madison's best kept secret for design and furniture. Shop our fabulous new showroom, Hard Rock Road, Fitchburg. Tonight at 5, an area senior care home is making plans when it comes to receiving the vaccine for its residents. We'll have the latest on that ahead at 5. Cloud cover will keep temperatures from falling too much at night and from warming up too much during the day. Some flurries are possible Friday night into Saturday. Chris Reese has the forecast at 5. And ahead, it takes a look inside the city's temporary men's shelter space this winter. It'll help promote social distancing. We'll take a closer look tonight on News 3 Now at 6. Here's a live look. Yep, there we go. We went to the commercial instead. Let's take a look at stocks were mixed on Wall Street, but it was still a record setter. The Dow Industrials lost 44 points, closing at 30,145. But the Nasdaq and S&P 500 both closed at record highs, up 63 and six and a half, respectively. With the coronavirus surging across the country, cities and states have imposed new restrictions on businesses and restaurants to help slow the spread. But many restaurant owners fear their businesses will not survive. The Independent Restaurant Coalition says half a million independent restaurants and 11 million jobs could be lost because of the pandemic. Patty Rockenwagner's Dear John's Restaurant in Los Angeles sits empty. Indoor and outdoor dining isn't allowed during what she says is the most lucrative season for restaurants. She's asking patrons to help. There's a letter to sign that asks Congress to please act on this bill because for every day that this relief is not provided, it's another restaurant that's closing, a bar that's closing, jobs that are going away forever, and dreams that are dashed. It's now pushing Congress to pass the Restaurants Act, a $120 billion fund geared toward assisting small restaurants and bars. Madison's restaurants are struggling. That's no secret. It's a problem we've continued to highlight during the pandemic. But we wanted to hear from the chefs themselves on what it's like to fight to survive right now. We sat down with the owners of two dozen of your favorite Madison restaurants to hear their stories. News 3 Now this morning's Leah Linscheid has more. When we asked businesses to talk to us about this, the number of folks willing to step up and talk was pretty telling, at least to me. So I want to take a minute and name 
at least a couple of them for you. I think I wrote down about 20. It's Cooper's Tavern, Ancora Coffee, The Plaza, <coughs> Sardine, Gates and Brovi, Salvatore's, Pig in a Fur Coat, Merchant, Lucille, Dottie Dumplings, The Old Fashioned, Harvest, Cadre, 107 State, Madison's, Morris Ramen, Crescendo, Gibbs, Grandpa's Pizza, Liliana's, and The Roman Candle. And that's really just a fraction of the restaurants in our area who are struggling during this pandemic and especially during this winter. Now I want to take a second to thank all of you for taking the time to talk to us this morning. And I want to start with Chef Dan Fox from Heritage. What are you experiencing right now? What's it been like to try and run a restaurant during a pandemic? Uh, it's been miserable, <laughs> to the bottom line. Um, it's been beyond challenging. It's, it's just purely not sustainable at this point. Um, we went from turning away folks at seven o'clock. I've been, you know, forever grateful about that. Um, town doing three tables on a Friday. Um, we've had to pivot, 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 pivot nonstop, you know, to keep our, keep money coming in and especially keep our employees going. And that's really the most important thing right now is to keep as many people with us as possible. Uh, my employees is what makes Heritage Tavern. And without them, I'm really, I'm not here to Stavern. So that's my biggest focus right now. And it's really about building that awareness to the community that we will not survive without your help at this point in time. So I know all of you have a story about how you're trying to manage right now. All of those stories are deeply personal. Patrick DePoola, I want to ask you, you have both Salvatore's and Dark Horse, and I know I've talked to you before about the tragedy you and this community has experienced already with the Sun Prairie explosion, uh, the historic flooding both two years ago. I guess, how does this pandemic compare? Uh, you know, the, the, the main difference is that uh, during that during those other catastrophes, there was a, a way forward. You know, there was always the, the hope of insurance on the horizon or community support or or some direction from the, the municipal government. So the unknowns were manageable. Uh, today, the big difference is, is that we just don't know. We're not receiving leadership from the federal level. Uh, and, you know, each one of us is essentially on our own to try and figure out how best to manage through this crisis. Uh, we're seeing a record downturn in income at all of our restaurants, which is making things critical. So I, I really think that the biggest difference is that, you know, we're in uncharted territory. Uh, and, you know, it's that feeling of being alone and without support that is the most disconcerting. Leah, thank you. That's just part of the really heartbreaking conversations we had with these folks. We're going to keep that conversation going tomorrow. Tomorrow, Leah will continue the conversation and they'll tell us how many restaurants might have to close their doors next year and what you can do to help out. And the answers might surprise you. Yeah, it's a real crisis, that's for sure. All right, we're continuing to highlight how you can help support your favorite local spot this holiday season. Every day, we're spotlighting some of our favorite spots that you can help save. And today, that's Dottie's in downtown Madison, most famous burger in town, of course. They're really trying to push gift cards right now. So go to their website and scroll to the bottom to order a gift card. Or you can give them a call, and they'll run it out to your car if you're worried about staying safe. You can find all the information along with a list of other restaurants that could really use your help on channel3000.com. And when we come back, you can buy happiness during the pandemic, can you? Well, what is it? What does what we buy tell us about our lives? Our happiness expert, Christine Whelan, has some interesting insights into all of this. That's coming up when Live at 4 continues. Portage families here at the Portage Furniture Store, the Ayers family that has grown a little bit since, yeah, he says high five. That's right. <laughs> since the last time we were we, here. Yeah, uh, we sure have. You see, Austin and I, proud third generation owners, and now we're working on our fourth generation. We've seen generations of customers come through, and I think we take a lot of joy in seeing, hey, my parents bought from your dad or bought from your uncles or bought from your grandpa. Mm -hmm. And now Austin and I get to enjoy that ourselves. How much fun is it on the days you come back into town and the three of you are together? It's, um, it's very special. Like I said, longevity from when my dad and uncle started in 1940 to now. 
very special. We're very, very proud to showcase uh, predominantly American-made brands. Safe and pressure-free shopping. We have a number of great lines, including Serta Mattresses, Smith Brothers, Flex Steel, Lazy Boy, and England. And not everyone has the heir's last name, but everybody here, I know you guys consider family. Yeah, we really have some wonderful people here, including, you know, two salespeople, Rosie and Punky, who have been here with us from the very beginning, and we're really thankful for them. Yeah, they really make you guys, they're the ones who make you all look good. Yeah, they are. No doubt. And we need all the help we can get. Yeah, well, he said it. I <laughs> What are some of the biggest things that set you guys apart? The free delivery. <laughs> yeah. They still got it. I was wondering. We do. Glad to yeah. hear it. And on top of a you know, first class free delivery service, we're very proud of our huge, uh, huge selection of top name brand uh, furniture at guaranteed low prices. <laughs> well, with the free delivery, we've got a lot of stops, but I'm glad you're helping me. From the Portage Furniture Store, I'm Emmy Fink, and you're buzzed in Madison. He's excited. My psoriatic arthritis pain, I had enough. It's not getting in my way. Joint pain, swelling, tenderness, much better. My psoriasis, clearer. Cosentix works on all of this. Four years and counting. So watch out. I got this. Watch me. Real people with active psoriatic arthritis look and feel better with Cosentix. Cosentix works fast for results that can last. It treats the multiple symptoms of psoriatic arthritis, like joint pain and tenderness, back pain, and helps stop further joint damage. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentix. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections and lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms. If your inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop or worsen, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to, serious allergic reactions may occur. I just look and feel better. I got real relief with Cosentix. Watch me. Feel real relief. Ask your rheumatologist about Cosentix. Well, as we take a look at first warrant traffic, no problems along the Beltline or the interstates on the east side of Madison. Travel time is about 15 minutes either direction on the Beltline between University Avenue and the interstate. Heading out of Madison, 25 minutes down to Janesville on I-3990, 16 minutes to Sauk City on US-12, and 19 minutes on East Washington Avenue and US-151 to Sun Prairie. That is your news three now, first warrant traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. Well, this guy is literally a one-man wrecking crew. Workers in Guatemala are shouting at the man in the red shirt to stop. But he never breaks stride. He keeps walking through the freshly poured and leveled cement, destroying all the work done by the crew up to this point. This guy's almost knee deep in concrete and he's either not paying attention or he just doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. Pretty frustrating. <laughs> those, those workers, what are you doing? All right, tis the season to be jolly, and lest we forget, it's also a pandemic. So in this time of uncertainty, can you buy happiness this holiday season? Well, according to our happiness expert, Christine Whelan, a professor in consumer science at the University of Wisconsin, we are all trying to buy happiness. And our purchases can tell us a lot about what we think will improve our well-being. Christine, welcome back to Live at Four. Happy holidays. Happy Hi, holidays. Great to be here. Yeah. I mean, this is really quite a holiday season. And <laughs> honestly, to me, it, it's sort of like the beginning of a joke. What do uh, puppies, treadmills, cookies, and toilet paper all have in common? Well, these are all things that are in short supply this holiday season. And uh, as somebody who studies consumer science, it's really interesting to see how we try to buy happiness and well-being over the holiday season. What does this tell us about how we're trying to buy happiness? Well, so what we're looking for is comfort and community and togetherness and a sense of normalcy, even if we need to kind of create this for the first time in kind of a Hallmark Christmas sort of way. I mean, there are there are cities in America where Christmas trees are in short supply. Um, I tried to buy some advent calendars uh, and they were all sold out. Can uh, candles, um, all sorts of holiday decorations. Those things are, um, are, are really becoming popular again, in part because we're staying home a lot more as as we celebrate. So what are some of the holiday shopping uh, and spending trends you're seeing? Things like, I've read a lot about how you can't find baking supplies and you can't find Christmas lights and that's all telling us that we're trying to <laughs> heal ourselves and make ourselves happier. 
Indeed. So what we're seeing is people are shopping online more than they're shopping in person. So if you haven't ordered online um, and, and you want to have your Christmas gifts sent to you and be under the tree on Christmas Eve, time's running out. Uh, more stores are doing pickup. Um, so you order online and then you do you do pickup in a physical store rather than have it delivered. You're also seeing people potentially spending more this holiday season, in part because they kind of want to make up for the fact that they're not going to be with their loved ones um, or in as big of a group as they hope. So instead, we see people spending more to try to make up for it. And retailers obviously are welcoming that because this has been a very, very tough financial year for them. So we're seeing more of these installment plans and, and you know, buy now and pay later plans, which can be good deals as long as you don't miss a payment. But, but buyer beware on some of those as well. Are people running the danger of overspending more than they can afford? Absolutely, right. Uh, people are people are overspending, uh, and, um, and and really people are, are trying to, to you know we emotionally eat. Well, we also emotionally shop. So what we're seeing is people are spending more on things to make ourselves feel better, things to do at home. We are seeing sales of alcohol uh, rise uh, exponentially, it seems these days. And so we're really you know trying to you know try to give ourselves a pat on the back in these in these tough times. I can tell you that I have been baking up a storm. Um, and um, and during COVID-19, I don't know if it's, you know, 10, 15, or 20 pounds that, uh, that can come on <laughs> during those baking fiascos. But uh, these are things that a lot of people are doing. We're seeing this on a wide scale. Well, we've always been told, you know, that money can't buy you happiness. But, you know, small things <laughs> maybe can to get you through this. It's true. So money can buy you happiness if you know how to spend it right, I always tell my students. If you spend it in keeping with your values and you spend it in a pro-social way. So thinking about small businesses, thinking about the charities and other people that you want to help this year, uh, thinking about somebody other than you. Uh, those things are great ways to use your limited resources in keeping with your values to make the world a better place this holiday season. And you know what? Baking some cookies can't help. No. <laughs> hurt either, right? It, it, can't, it can only hurt. help. It can't hurt. And next year we'll hopefully be back to normal here's hoping right. here's hoping here's but uh, merry and happy to all uh and hopefully the, the the shopping will continue in keeping with our values 2020 we'll see you later Absolutely. Right. <laughs> christine thanks for being with us happy holidays you thanks, too christine great to see you we'll have a final check your forecast coming up your local Monk's Bar and Grill is still open for dine-in guests and convenient takeout. Monk's thanks you for continually supporting our locally owned business during these trying times. Visit monksbarandgrill.com to order online and easily view our menus. Here's a secret worth sharing. Robertson, Wisconsin's aesthetic leader, is making it easier to tackle pesky frown lines. It's a Botox BOGO for anyone new to this service. There is no better time to learn how Botox is different at Robertson. I have the power to lower my blood sugar and A1C. Because I can still make my own insulin. And Trulicity activates my body to release it, like it's supposed to. Trulicity is for type 2 diabetes. It's not insulin, and I only need to take it once a week. Plus, it lowers the risk of cardiovascular events. Trulicity isn't for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, changes in vision, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Side effects include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, belly pain, and decreased appetite, which lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I have it within me to lower my A1C. Ask your doctor about Trulicity. Your local Monk's Bar and Grill is still open for dine-in guests and convenient takeout. Monk's thanks you for continually supporting our locally owned business during these trying times. Visit monksbarandgrill.com to order online and easily view our menus. Tonight at 5, the latest on the officer-involved death that happened near Fort Atkinson last week. And as the cooler weather makes its way into Wisconsin, the city's temporary men's shelter is moving from Warner Park to an old fleet building. We'll show you what it'll provide at 5. How many of you are worried about having to shut down your doors? Only News 3 Now talks to local restaurant owners struggling to stay afloat. We're coming to our last legs here. We are in dire straits. What you can do right now to help on the next News 3 Now this morning.
Uh, Here's a live look at Fifth Avenue in New York City where the snow is falling heavily at this time. A little different story here, Gary. Uh, temperatures are cold enough for snow, but right now we're right at 30 in Madison, 32 Janesville. Temperatures are going to stay uh, pretty steady over the next couple of hours. Wind chills right now, upper 20s to the lower 30s, so not too bad. Looks like it'll be quiet for tomorrow as well. All right, Gary, thank you. Coming up tomorrow here on Live at 4, Dr. Zorba Pastor will have the latest COVID vaccine updates. He'll take your calls live. And it happens once every 800 years, and this is one of them. We'll tell you about the Christmas star. That's coming up tomorrow here on Live at 4.